20 Rush albums, and I'm going to pick my favorite song from each one. Ugh, I'm in big trouble. Okay, so Rush has made 20 albums. They're not going to make any more. The 20 albums include a cover album, a, a, an album of cover songs, and I'm going to include that in this list. So what I decided to do is to take a look back at all of Rush's albums and see if I could challenge myself to pick my favorite song from each album. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the best song from each album, that might be a video for another time. But this time, and without thinking about it too much, I thought, okay, here's the album. What is my, my favorite Rush song? What is my favorite song from that album? And I'm gonna go through all the albums and I'm gonna pick a song and I'll tell you why it's my favorite one and see if you agree. If you don't agree or whatever, you can put it in the comments and we can have a lot of fun with this. If you're new to the channel, I try to post videos all about Rush about once a week or so. And if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the notification bell as well so you don't miss any time I post something new. With that out of the way, let's get to it. Okay, so Rush's first album, the self-titled Rush. And this is an interesting album because I don't really listen to it very often, hardly ever actually. I tend not to listen to the original songs of, that are up here on this album because I just think there are other versions of the songs that appear on this album that are just way better than the original. Yes, you get the rawness of Alex and Getty with the original drummer John Rutsey, uh, but I, I feel like when Neil Peart came into the band, they took all of these songs to a whole other level. But in saying that, I do have to pick a favorite song. And my favorite song is Working Man. And why is that my favorite song? Well, I'm not sure if that always was my favorite song. But once I heard the live version from the Time Machine tour in 2011, that just took the song to a whole new level. That actually probably made it one of Rush's best songs of all time when they did it in that way. And yes, there were great, ver great live versions of that song previously to that, but just the, the way they performed that song on that tour really elevated that song to a whole new level. And one thing I'll note about Rush's debut album, and to me, it's kind of like, it's kind of like their demo album. It's sort of like Neil Peart was already part of the band, but he didn't have time to record this album. So they got John Rutsey to sit in for him. And they created this record, which, uh, you know, here's our demo album. And then uh, when Mercury signed them, you know, Neil Peart took his place, took his rightful place in the band, and just, they just went from there. And, of course, I'm being facetious, that's not how it happened, but um, that's kind of like how I look at Rush's debut album, sort of like their demo for what was to come with Neil Peart sitting in the rest of the way. Anyway, Working Man, my favorite song off of Rush's debut album, the self-titled Rush. Next album is Fly By Night. Lots of great songs on this album, and maybe at other times one was my favorite, and another time another one was my favorite. But uh, as of now, my favorite song from Fly By Night is By Tor and the Snow Dog. And why is that my favorite song? Because of this. <music> Enough said. Next we have Rush's third album, Caress of Steel. This, to me, might be Rush's most underrated album. And I mentioned this before in passing in other videos that I'll probably make a video dedicated just to that album. It is a really great album. And I bet the members of Rush like that album more than they lead on. So anyway, I'll talk about it at some time. But anyway, it was a tough choice, but my I think my favorite song on this album right now is the Necromancer. Just barely beating out The Fountain of Lamneth. Uh, the Fountain of Lamneth is kind of like an epic song. You know, really long. But I think uh, The Necromancer kind of like is what The Fountain of Lamneth probably should have been. Kind of like compact. And just, it has elements of, the, all three of the members shine on this, on this song. And, you know, it's just a cool story. And, you know, you have elements of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and they insert you know, Willowdale in there, you know, where, where the man, band members are actually from. But it's just the incredible musicianship shown at such an early stage in Rush, Rush's career. I mean, that album just, 
really kicks it. And actually, in my other channel, The Paradiddler, or it's actually my other channel is called Omar Alvarado, but I did a drum cover of a song off of another album, uh, Double Agent, on the Counterparts album. And in the instrumental breakdown, I actually played the instrumental breakdown in the Necromancer in that song. I'll include a link in the description below to my drum cover of Double Agent so you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, we'll get to Counterparts later. But as of now, my favorite song off of Cars of Steel is The Necromancer. Next album is 2112. And my favorite song off of 2112 is 2112. And I would like to pick another song, but I can't because there's actually a section of, uh, in this epic that actually is one of Rush's best performances of all time. It's uh, the grand finale. And really, the grand finale is the part of 2112 that makes it my favorite song on this album. And here's a little snippet. I'm telling you, these guys just shine uh, when they did it on that on the Moving Pictures tour. That live performance, that's actually the first time I heard 2112 was when I saw Exit Stage Left on MTV way back in the day. So my favorite song off of 2112 is the title track, 2112. Next on the list is A Farewell to Kings. And my favorite song on this album is Cygnus X1. Now there's another epic song on this record, Xanadu, but it's not my favorite on this record. Xanadu might be my favorite on a particular live album that they did later on, but for this album, it's got to be Cygnus X1. And I'll tell you, th this song is just way out different from anything they did before. Completely different. And it really took them on a totally different path of progressive rock when they started this uh, epic tale of Hemispheres, which they continued on the next record. But it, to me, it's, it might be Rush's hardest rock song that they've ever done. This is a heavy song. And it just starts the epic journey that we come to know and love. Uh, book one of, of Hemispheres. So I'm going to say that for Farewell to Kings, my favorite song is Cygnus X1. Next comes Hemispheres, and I got to give it to the title track, Hemispheres, being my favorite song on this record. I mean, every song on this record is pretty epic. <laughs> I mean, you have The Trees and, and La Vira Strangiato, uh, arguably their best instrumental, arguably. And, you know, Circumstances is not far behind, but it's just that Hemispheres is such an epic song. I mean, it really was a pinnacle in Rush's history as far as their musicianship, as far as their extreme experimentation in their progressive rock movement, we could call it. It's something that, you know, fans would love to have seen live. I think almost every Rush fan, if you poll them, I th maybe if they were to be asked, what tour would you have wanted to see live? that you haven't seen. I think most of them would want to have seen the Hemispheres tour live. Hopefully that can be unearthed. Maybe there's some live footage out there of this tour. But in any case, my favorite song off of Hemispheres is the title track, Hemispheres. Next we have Permanent Waves. And man, I'm telling you, this is getting really tough. Yeah, it's getting tough. I mean, every song on Permanent Waves is just massive. <laughs> I don't even want to name them. Because, you know, I might convince myself while I'm talking that it would be a different song. But as of now, my favorite song on Permanent Waves is Natural Science. Uh, it's just yet another epic song. There's so much going on here. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's science. You have the calm, serene beginning, which builds up into frantic playing by the three. And epic lead guitar playing by Alex, you know, those epic drum fills, and of course, Getty's bass. I mean, it's got all the elements of a typical Rush song, basically. It's just a great, great song. So my favorite on Permanent Waves, as of now, is Natural Science. Next comes Moving Pictures. Yeah, really popular. I mean, there's uh, hit after hit after hit on this record really tough to choose. I have, I mean, I think it depends what mood I'm in that, I, you know, one song is my favorite over the other, 
but you might be surprised that as of now, my favorite song on moving pictures is The Camera Eye. Yet another epic song. And there are lots of epic songs on this record. And this is where many people were saying that, you know, you can make a movie out of every Rush song. And it's true. You have songs like Red Barchetta, which has been said that, you know, there are feature films that don't have enough, as much content as that six plus minute song. And that's true. But The Camera Eye, it's a story. It's a tale of two cities, <laughs> really. Um, the way that Neil Peart penned how each city, New York and London, the personality that comes out. And when the verses are being played and when Giddy's singing about New York and he's singing about London, it's interesting that the music is the same, but the mood is different just by the lyrics. And this song actually has one of my favorite lyrics of all of Rush's catalog. Yeah, I really love that. The Camera Eye, my favorite song on Moving Pictures. Next we have Signals. Oh man, I mean this is really, <laughs> it's really hard. You know, lots of songs are great on every Rush record and it's hard to pick a favorite. And you know, it just depends on the mood. Um, as of right now, I think my favorite song on Signals is The Analog Kid. I mean, The Analog Kid is just a dreamy song. Um, it brings, especially especially guys, I think, brings us back to our youth, our, you know, when we were young and we were daydreaming, you know, be it about girls or being about getting away, about being free, leaving. It just transports you to a time kind of where you, you wish you were again. And it just brings you back to that place where you were innocent and you were kind of free and you were, you know, just the beginning of your life and you were about to embark on a different journey. You didn't know what the journey was going to be. And just the way the, the verses are kind of fast paced and then the chorus is kind of like a little surreal and swirly and, you know, dreamy. And then one of Alex's greatest solos in all of Russ's catalog. Just a great song. And obviously there are a lot of great songs on Signals. And I think Signals might be my favorite album of all because it came in a time, it was actually the first Rush record that I bought when I was a kid, because I started learning about moving pic of Rush with movie pictures, but uh, Signals was the first record I bought, so it has a special place in my heart. Um, but anyway, The Analog Kid, my favorite song currently of, of Signals. Next up is Grace Under Pressure, and yeah, this one's tough as well. I think it depends on what mood I'm in. This is one where I've, I had such a really hard time picking, because there's really two but I only want to mention one in this video as my favorite. So I think right now, hmm, man, this was tough. I actually had a song picked right before I, re I started recording this video. But as I'm talking right now, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> my favorite song on Grace Under Pressure is Distant Early Warning. It was another song. But then I remembered how fantastically epic the live version is from the Grace Under Pressure tour. That kind of convinced me just right now that that's my favorite song. Just watch the Grace Under Pre the live version on the Grace Under Pressure tour of Distant Early Warning. And that is really, I mean, it's a great version. I think it's the best version of any of their live versions of any tour that they've done even after that. So yeah, Distant Early Warning, my favorite song on Grace Under Pressure. Next we have Power Windows, and again, I mean, every album, I mean, I, I, maybe I should stop saying it, every album has a bunch of great songs that you can pick, and it depends on my mood, but I think right now, actually, this song has been my favorite on Power Windows for a long time. My favorite song is Territories, and one of the reasons it's my favorite song off the album is the way they did the live version on A Show of Hands during the Hold Your Fire tour. The epicness of that song and you know the tribal beat and the things that it's describing as far as you know how nations try to dominate the world by acquiring land and territories and stuff like that the chorus is just you know really wonderful chorus and then at the end of the song how it kind of ends triumphantly sort of kind of like wishful hopeful and then it's the way it fades out it has a lot of personality that song and the drumming is is just fantastic especially during the chorus that's really creative drumming on the part of neil 
Um, so for a long time, Territories has been my favorite song on Power Windows, so I'm gonna give it to that one. Next we have Hold Your Fire. Hold Your Fire again, lots of great songs. And this one really sometimes, one song is my favorite and, and sometimes it's another. And um, I'm gonna call an audible on this one. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with uh, Grace Under Pressure. I had another song slated as my favorite for this record, but I think I'm going to pick Prime Mover as my favorite song on Hold Your Fire. One of the reasons that Prime Mover is my favorite song is that pretty much every line in that song is a great one-liner. Like, it's a statement in and of itself. And probably my favorite line or my favorite two lines of that song is, the point of the journey is not to arrive. That is just one of the greatest lines Neil has ever written. And it's so true. You go on a journey, you plan everything, and you're, maybe you're driving there, you're flying there. The anticipation is just, it's just awesome. Like, you're just looking forward to it. Then you're there. You enjoy it, and then, you know, you, you go back home. You know, it's not about the destination. It's, it's about the journey. So the point of the journey is not to arrive makes such perfect sense and every every line in that song is just you know it's just a great great line and actually the one of the lines in that song is is where they got the a show of hands title for the uh, hold your fire tour the dvd called the show of hands it comes from prime mover anyway that's my favorite song on hold your fire next comes presto and i've had i've changed my mind uh, from time to time as what my favorite song is and but now currently my favorite song is the title track Presto. And really what pushed it over the top for me was their live version from the Time Machine tour. And it, I believe that was the only time that Presto was played live during that tour, the Time Machine tour. is beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful song. And it's amazing how Rush pulls off live versions of their studio songs. It's just, they're eerily precise. And it's, it's almost always better live. It's just, it's so difficult to make things perfect in the studio, but when they do it and, and then they pull it off live even better than in the studio. It's just a great song, epic song. So my favorite off of Presto is the title track. Next comes Roll the Bones, and for this one, my favorite song is Dreamline. It's interesting that every tour that they've played it, uh, Alex's solo is slightly different. This album is special to me in a way because it's kind of the same age as my daughter is, and this is kind of like one of the records that she grew up listening because I was playing it all the time, and it's the one she remembers most. And Dreamline, I believe it's her favorite song off of that album, and it happens to be my favorite song. So Dreamline off of Roll the Bones, that's my favorite song. Next is Counterparts. Uh, Counterparts might be my favorite sounding record after you know, Presto and Roll the Bones sounding a little uh, light, uh, at least in the, from the drums perspective. Now I'm always more focused on the drumming than anything else, but uh, Counterparts has some balls to it. And um, my favorite song, I believe right now off of that one is Double Agent. And I did mention previously in the video that I did a drum cover of Double Agent where I included part of the Necromancer in there. So, like I said, I included a link below so you can see that. Uh, those were in, you know, long time ago. I mean, I was still learning, trying to get better at the drums. So it was a little ambitious for me to do. But anyway, uh, Double Agent is just a weird, demented song, as uh, Giddy said during the Counterparts tour when they played it. And they didn't play it again on any other tour. I don't think they did anyway, but um, it is, it's, it's a really cool song. It's a song that Neil Peart does not use the hi-hat, never touches it. Just a, like a twisted different song. So anyway, uh, my favorite on Counterparts is Double Agent. Now comes Test for Echo. And my favorite song on Test for Echo is Driven. Driven is, it's a driving song. <laughs> it's a really good song. 
every time I hear it's my turn to drive, it just makes me want to get up and go. It's kind of an inspiring song. It has a really good groove and has like this um, offbeat kind of like uh, sign odd, odd time signature changes. And it's, it's just a very interesting song. They played it live a few times for a couple of tours. Uh, it's really good. So I'm going to say Driven is my favorite song on Test for Echo. Next is the beloved Vapor Trails. Very emotional album. Everybody was so happy that Rush uh, came back after a five year hiatus uh, to record another album. We were so appreciative. And I did a previous video on uh, the differences between the original version and the remixed version. But anyway, my favorite song currently on Vapor Trails is the title track, Vapor Trails. It is um, kind of like a hope based song. It's very inspiring, very lovely chorus, uh, lovely bridge. It's just a beautiful song. It's very inspiring. It's kind of like, it sounds like a triumphant return of the band, kind of like saying we're back and we're going to continue doing this. So that's what the song says to me. And every time I hear it, you know, I get emotional because it reminds me of what the band went through and went, and their comeback. And yeah, great song. Vapor Trails, title track. Next we have the song, the album of covers, Feedback. And you know, I included this one because yeah, you know, Rush did it and they toured on Feedback, which was the R30 tour. So it was only fair that I included in this list. And my favorite song from that album is um, Heart Full of Soul. That's a good song. The original is a good song and I think Rush elevated it. I mean, it's really good. I mean, I, there's not much to say about the song except that, you know, I think Rush made it a lot better. And I think it's the song with the most soul <laughs> of the covers. So yeah, Heart Full of Soul is my favorite song off of Feedback. Next album, Snakes and Arrows. Um, this to me is an oddball, off-tangent album of Rush. Maybe I'll talk about it in another video. But it, it, I mean, this album to me exists in its own little universe, so to speak. Um, in any case, so a lot of good choices on this song, as, uh, on this album as to pick a favorite. But I think as of right now, my favorite song is Far Cry. Um, great song. And you know, the Alex chord, the Alex Lifeson chord is back. Um, makes a big comeback on this song. And um, the chorus is one of the best choruses in all of Versus Catalog. It's just a great chorus. So catchy and lively and energetic. And Neil is up to his shenanigans, you know, doing a different fill every time he comes back to it. So it just makes it you know, just that, more, that much more interesting. Anyway, Far Cry favorite song on Snakes and Arrows. Last, unfortunately, the last song on our list, the last uh, album on our list is Clockwork Angels, the masterpiece swan song, swan album of Rush, arguably their best record. I'm going to say arguably because, you know, I have some favorites and, you know, there's what's their best record, what's their, what's one's personal favorite. Those are different things. But to me, my favorite song on this one is the title track, Clockwork Angels. Yeah, there's something about this song. that There's an epicness to it as well. And the thing about Clockwork Angels is that it's a concept record from beginning to end. It's not like Crest of Steel and 2112 and Hemispheres where they had their side long songs. And, you know, the record is kind of like, well, mainly 2112 and Hemispheres where you think of them as concept records, but it was really just one side of it was the concept. Clockwork Angels, the whole thing is a concept. And the genius of this record is that each song stands on its own. It doesn't depend on the other songs. They can be played out of context and they would still matter. They, it would still make sense, each song on its own. Uh, but Clockwork Angels to me uh, stands out as kind of like this grand song and, you know, the way, uh, you know, People raise their hands as if to fly, <laughs> kind of thing. And, you know, the way they did that live, you know, it's pretty impressive. I was glad to see that song live. So, Clockwork Angels, the title track, is my favorite song. Whew, so that's it. I mean, that was really hard. Oh my goodness. It was so hard to pick a favorite song from each album. And I'll probably change my mind at some point. I'll pick other songs that are my favorite at the time. But as of this video, those are my favorite songs from each of the Rush records. And, you know, hopefully this kind of like gives fodder to those who, uh, you know, have reaction 
channels and they want to see you know what rush songs they could react to uh, from this rush fan you can see which are my favorite songs from each album you can uh, choose to react to any of those obviously there's a ton more rush songs that you can react to and you know to the fellow rush fans out there that watch this you know maybe it'll inspire you inspire you to go down memory lane and kind of like you know listen through all of the albums and see which one of your favorite song is maybe at the time you do it or maybe a month later it'll be something different because there's so much material that rush produced and that's just the studio stuff we're not even talking about all the live stuff that they've done we're not talking about all of these you know what we call bootleg back in the day I'm talking a long time ago but now all these videos of a live rush performances on youtube and you can't not watch them i mean they're there like before, if you had a bootleg or you heard a bootleg record, you'd be like, I don't even know if I should be listening to this because no, it's like not official. But you can't unhear what you heard. And if you see a video on YouTube, you can't unwatch it once you watch it. So might as well just watch it because it's all there. And that just makes you love the band more or it makes you more impressed by what these three guys could do live. And not just that they can do it live is that they could do better versions of their songs better than their studio versions when they did it live it was so much better and plus another thing that made me feel is a little bit of nostalgia because we know that there's not going to be any more new material from the band so you know kind of was a little kind of sad to go through all the all the records but at the same time it's so enjoyable because every song is different Every album is different from each other. I mean, there are other bands where their first, you know, these rock bands where their first album sounds like their latest album. They just all sound the same, um, not Rush. Every album is different, every song is different, and that just makes it more enjoyable and just makes us uh, like them more. Anyway, that's my video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope it inspires you to go back through all of Rush's catalog and see what your favorite song from each album is. And if you wanna tell us what they are, Go ahead, leave them in the comments. Let everybody know what your favorite Rush song is and why it is your favorite song. And don't forget, if you like what you see, click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Anyway, that's it from me for now. See you in the next one. Why are you lurking around? Did you want to give your pick for your favorite song? Do you want to pick your favorite Rush song, Kitty Kitty? Do you not want to do that? Or do you want to do that right now? What do you say? All right, fine. Hey, get out of here.